Maybe that's what I need to do. Use a booster. Okay, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Hello, hello. We're five minutes late. We are? Are we? No, just two minutes. Well, because the, the video was not connecting properly. Okay, but here we are. And uh, Jesus says to the crowds, we're reading from St. Matthew, chapter 11, verses 11 to 15. Jesus said to the crowds, Amen, I say to you, among those born of women, there has been none greater than John the Baptist. Yet, the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Do you understand what that means? Huh? There has been none greater than John the Baptist of all born of women. What does that mean? That means John the Baptist is the greatest man, right? I mean, for Jesus to be the greatest man ever born, for Jesus to be describing him that way, okay? Um, these words of Jesus tell us that uh, he's even greater than his own father, St. Joseph. Of course, not greater than, than Our Lady because Our Lady was born immaculate, right? Um, but uh, whatever it is that, uh, that Jesus meant was really something very, very remarkable in this sense. Imagine calling John the Baptist, St. John the Baptist, the greatest man who has ever been born of woman. But, but look at the distinction our Lord makes here. But the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. What does that mean? <clears throat> the greatest, the least in the kingdom of heaven. That tells you that in heaven, maybe, there's a hierarchy of saints. There are saints who are uh, higher up in the ranks of sanctity. There are some saints who are more saintly than others, although all of them are saints, but some are more saintly than others, right? But the least of them, the least saintly one, is even greater than John the Baptist, than the greatest man ever born of woman on earth. And there's a reason why. Uh, from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence. Okay, here, listen to this. The kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violent are taking it by force. All the prophets in the law prophesied up to the time of John. <clears throat> and if you are willing to accept it, he is Elijah, the one who is to come. Whoever has ears, sorry, whoever <laughs> has ears ought to hear. <clears throat> okay, so here is our Lord praising John the Baptist for being the greatest man ever born of a woman. Okay, And yet, yet, no matter how great he was, he is still, he is still uh, uh, nothing compared to the least of the saints who are already in heaven. How does that work? If okay. he's the greatest man, then yeah. what does that mean? If he is the greatest man, okay. If he's the greatest man, and then there's another saint who's greater than him. Okay, he's the greatest man ever born of woman. Okay, Be but in heaven, okay, he has no comparison to the least of the saints. Okay, what does that mean? Why is that? And listen to what our Lord said after that. The kingdom of heaven is being taken by storm, by violence. Okay, and the, the violent ones are the ones making it there. The ones who are, uh, the, the violent ones are the ones making it to heaven. Okay, what does that mean? What does this mean? It just means that, well, uh, the saints, the saints, those who are already in heaven, those who have already made it to the glory of heaven, are victors. They are the champions. Okay? They are the champions and the victors who already won the race, who already won the battle of sanctity. Okay? And that is why they made it to heaven. The people who are still on earth, who are still struggling like us okay, to win that crown of heaven 
Well, we're not your champions. We're not your victors. See? That is why John the Baptist, who at this time I presume was still alive when our Lord was describing this, eh? well, he was still on earth. He hasn't died. He was still just the greatest man. He was not yet a saint. And so until and unless we become saints, then we cannot be counted among the champions, among the victors. Right? That is why the saints, our departed brethren who are already in heaven, are called the church triumphant. triumphant. What do you mean by triumphant? Triumphant means they are uh, they're champions already. They triumph. They won. They won the battle on earth. They have won the battle of, of life on earth. The struggles of the life on earth. That is why they are now given the crown of the glory of heaven. That's why they are called the church triumphant. And those of us still on earth are called the church huh? militant. The church militant because we are still fighting. We are still fighting and fighting and fighting to become the saints that we have to be in heaven. And those who, are, who, who fought, who have fought, but not quite got to the point where they could be already be champions, right? Because they still have some remnants of sin that they needed to make up for. They go to purgatory. And those people in purgatory are called the church. I have no idea. <laughs> you have no idea. <laughs> they are the church suffering. They are the church suffering because they are still suffering. They are still purifying themselves. They have not quite, they have not quite made it. They have not quite uh, become the champions that they needed to be in order to get to heaven. But the beauty of, uh, of that is that those in purgatory are already assured. They are already assured of that eventual uh, the reward of being in heaven. Okay? They just needed to be purified uh, a tad more, a little bit more. And then they were, go they were going to have that crown of heaven. So um, it's very interesting how our Lord really, um, you know, projects that, that glory, right? That people in heaven, the souls in heaven uh, enjoy. And that there is really no comparison between the two lives, okay? The, the, the souls uh, who are already in heaven enjoying eternal uh, beatific vision and those of us struggling on earth. No matter how, how, um, how good we are on earth, uh, whether we are as good as John the Baptist or not, the best ever born of a woman, um, still we are nothing compared to the least of the saints. Okay? And that is why... That is why we have to keep fighting. That is why we have to keep struggling to improve ourselves and to really fight for sanctity. And our Lord in this uh, phrase which says, The kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent are taking it by force. What does that mean? See? What does that mean? It doesn't mean that there's a war in heaven. Uh, the war is being waged here on earth. The war, the battle is being waged here on earth. And those who are violent... Not physically, okay? But those who do violence against the devil here on earth are the ones who win the crown of heaven. So the battleground is here on earth. The battle has to be fought here on earth. And who or what are we fighting against? Eh? We are fighting against temptation and we are fighting against the devil. And we're also fighting against our own evil inclinations. We are fighting against our own bad tendencies. Okay? Those are the things we have to fight against. We have to fight against the bad influences in our environment. See, Our, our environment can cause us plenty of occasions of sin nowadays. See? And, 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 uh, and these are all the, uh, these and more are the things that we fight against here on earth. Plenty, plenty of temptations, plenty of things that, that uh, we have to keep our guard up against if we are to win this war. And so that brings us to the point that, you know, uh, it is not easy to become a saint. It is not easy. 
we cannot hope to become saints by uh, taking it easy. <laughs> like it's not easy to get an A, right? Uh, so now, now we are, uh, as we mentioned yesterday in the video, yes, uh, uh, nowadays we are at crunch time. We are at crunch time trying to finish all of our school work and we are trying to do a very good job at it. So it's not easy because we want to get that, that uh, elusive A grade, right? We want to get that. We were, we're trying our best to, to be very good students for the glory of God. Okay? But we have to try hard and we have to work our behinds out in order to get that good grade. Right? Not for any reason, but for the greater glory and honor of God. And it's not easy. Right? It's not easy. It's a struggle. It's a fight. And, and you know... Uh, if you notice how sleepy I am, we have been having very late nights in this household for days on end in order to try and finish that school work. So it's not easy. It's a sacrifice. It's a big sacrifice. And here we are just trying to get good grades, trying to finish our school work. But well, what more of heaven? What more about heaven? It's a daily, daily struggle. It's a fight that has to be waged every day from the moment we wake up in the morning. Right? From the time you hear that knock on the door, it's time to wake up, jumping out of bed, down on your knees, doing the morning offering, and being punctual for breakfast. All of that is a struggle. All of that is a fight. <coughs> And that is why, what have I always been saying? If you lose that first fight in the morning, which is to jump out of bed, the tendency for you to lose every other fight of the day is great. See? The tendency to lose every other fight of the day is great. So you got to win. You got to win. But the first time you should Taste that victory is upon hearing that knock in the morning when you need to wake up. And look, sanctity is both ah, tough and easy in the sense that it's easy because all you need to do is fight in the little things. All you need to do is really fight in the little things. Don't let, the, don't let your struggles grow big. Because if you don't fight in the little things of every day, then your struggles become big. They become bigger if you leave the devil to manipulate you in the little things of everyday life. Like waking up in the morning. Eh? That's a little thing, really, come to think of it. But if you give in to your laziness, if you give in to your um, uh, bad tendencies, it becomes a big, big struggle. Okay? And many other struggles all throughout the day become difficult. And then life becomes hard all throughout and all the way around. So don't do that. Okay? Fight in the little things. The big crown of sanctity is won by fighting the battle of the little things. Okay? But we have to wage a war. It has to be a battle and it has to be really a battle. Okay? We have to fight. Now, with the, the nice thing about this is we are not fighting alone. Okay, We are not fighting alone. While sanctity is a personal affair, we have plenty of help. There are plenty of saints who are already saints who can help us. Of course, our Lord is there. Jesus himself helps us with all the graces we need by giving us the graces we need in order to become saints. And then we have a mother. We have a mother who will help us and who always wants to help us. We just celebrated the feast of Our Lady of Guadalupe. And what did Our Lady tell Juan Diego? Yeah? Our Lady was calling him affectionately, Hey, Dieguito, am I not your mother? Am I not here to help you? Why don't you come to me? See? Juan Dieguito. Juan Diego, see, Our Lady calls him affectionately that way. See? Because I am your mother. Come to me. I am going to help you. I'm here to help you. See, And then we have St. Joseph. St. Joseph, our Father and Lord, 
Okay? Let's call on St. Joseph. He's going to help us. We have our guardian angel. Why do you think is my guardian angel named Popeye since I was a little kid, right? Because I want him to be my partner in fighting the devil. I wanted him to be my partner in waging that war against the devil. That's the main reason why my guardian angel is named Popeye. He was my hero when I was a kid and he's my hero up to now, right? Popeye, see? And so your guardian angel is your help. He is there to help you fight against the devil, fight against your temptations, fight against all the bad tendencies. And that is the way to fight for heaven, win the crown of heaven, and enjoy everlasting happiness Papa. for eternity. Mm. Okay? Well, good luck on that fight, folks. But we need to put up that fight every day in the little things. And... One of those fights is to be punctual to finish breakfast and to finish this commentary because we're going to be late for Mass. Okay, have a good day, everybody. Bye. Bye-bye, Chevelle. Okay, bye-bye.